the call. Yeah, we'll talk about Anderson. Harvard has so many options. You look right there, 80% of their scoring returns. They only lost one single senior from a season ago. So if someone doesn't have it, they have so many different backup options that Harvard has. They have a really deep bench, too. Like I mentioned, Indiana playing this Harvard team, coming off of a 22-point win against Brown, second time playing an Ivy League team this season, first time they play them back-to-back. Coach Terry Morin for Indiana, like you said, she wasn't too happy with a 22-point win, which is rare. No, she used words like lackluster, unacceptable, undisciplined in the post-game presser. Let's see what the Hoosiers have tonight, Ben. Harvard in their road blacks. Indiana, their home whites, ready to tip. And it's Lily Meister who won the tip. Chloe Moore McNeil will control for Indiana. Moore McNeil out there with Sydney Parrish. Lily Meister, Shea Chesky, the Penn State transfer, and Yarden Garrett zone. Chesky's going to get it started with a three-point attempt from the top of the key. No luck. Meister, nice job keeping it in bounds. But now Harvard's going to go the other way. This is their star, Harmony Turner, with the ball on the right side. Harvard's going to go out there with Gabby Anderson, Harmony Turner, Lydia Hatira, Elena Rodriguez, and Tanaya Glenn Bello over on the far side. Rodriguez thought about a three, drives inside. Nice little floater. Offensive putback, no good. A couple of missed attempts. How about the third time? No, Indiana finally able to clear. Here's their point guard, Chloe Moore McNeil, picked up her 100th win in an Indiana uniform on Monday against Brown. Eister shot denied from behind by the smaller Turner and Indiana will keep possession. So no score through the first minute here. Yeah, quick start there. I like Chesky getting the open look on the first trip for the Hoosiers. That's normally going to fall for the sharpshooter. Indiana tries to find Paris. We talked about her 20 points in the first game against Brown. They have a lot of options too. But the question is, who's going to step up and be that star this season? Indiana fans hope it might be Paris. Look at the aggressive course. defense deflection out of bounds from Turner, and that's what we saw a lot from the Harvard's first game. They just fly around the court. It looked like Meister was going to have an open layup. It was rejected right there. It looked like a straightforward pass on the wing extended, denied into the bench. They are relentless defensively. Four on the shot clock for Indiana. Try to get it immediately into Meister. Tipped off a couple different players, and it'll go Harvard's way. There's... Harvard's Carrie Moore in her third season as head coach. Pretty good first two years. She actually, 36 wins in those first two years. That is the most a Harvard coach has ever had in their first two seasons. Working over on the right side, Glenn Bellow had it tonight, and Indiana takes away again. Paris going to slow things down on the right side. She can shoot that three a little bit, shoot it off the dribble too. Now Meister in the high post, nice to up and under move, and she took an extra step. I think she was a little further from the basket than she thought. Yeah, Meiser trying to settle in on the inside. However, Harvard's keeping her out of the painted area as of right now. That's back-to-back -back turnovers to start for the Hoosiers. Keep an eye on that. Terry Morin on the other side for Indiana. What a last few years, nice three-year span as Indiana's head coach. Turner trying to work on the right side. Indiana's got their best defender on her in Chloe Moore McNeil. Now Glenn Bello tries to work on Garzon. Under 10 on the shot clock for Harvard. Rodriguez, she can knock down the three. Goes inside instead, and a nice little floater. First point of the game, uh, courtesy of the senior, Elena Rodriguez. Yeah, look out for the senior from Spain. She averaged over 10 last year, extremely efficient. Ranked sixth in the league with three and a half per assists per game. Ranked second in the league in field goal percentage. Indiana had 82 in their first game against Brown. Over two minutes in, nothing yet. Now Garzone's trying to post up inside. She gets to her left, got the bump, couldn't get it to fall. But a couple of free throws coming up for Yarden Garzone. Something interesting, the Hoosiers attacking that high-low spot. They're throwing it into the elbow on back-to-back -back trips and then looking for the next man underneath on the block. This time it's Garzone. She's typically a three-point threat, but with her height, she can play in the interior. Arizona in her first two seasons in Indiana, coming into her third, found her ways in uh, different, all different kinds of all Big Ten teams. Last season it was an all Big Ten honorable mention, all Big Ten second team, her freshman season as well as the freshman team that goes along with that. Knocks down her first free throw, just her third free throw attempt on the season, now she's three for three after only 66% a season ago. Look for Garzone to make a huge leap this year. I mean, she's coming off a great year, averaging just under 12, shooting over 42% from beyond the arc. But with no Sarah Scalia, she's gonna get even more looks from beyond the arc. She's so versatile, she's so long, and I think she's gonna play huge minutes for Terry Moran's Hoosiers. 
Garzon goes two for two from the line, and Indiana comes in with a little bit of a press, something we expected to see maybe a little bit from Harvard, but Harvard's able to beat it without any issues. Len Bella works to the corner, and Anderson tried to grab it. Parrish knocked it out of bounds. It was a two on one there, a great play from Parrish to knock it out of bounds. Looked like they were gonna get an open look, whether it was a three or a dribble drive. Harvard head coach Terry Moore coaches by using the monster and Mount goes on the right side to turn. Worked against a double team. Now Rodriguez top of the key, and it's pure. All five to start this one from Elena Rodriguez. And it's a 5-2 Harvard lead. About three minutes into the first quarter. Rodriguez can shoot it, Ben. 34% from beyond the arc last year. She scored 33 in a game last December. Chesky tried to work baseline and then find it out to the perimeter. Trickles all the way down to us, so another Indiana turnover. That is what Harvard does so well. They forced 34 turnovers on Bud Day against UMass. Yes, you heard that right, 34. I checked it three different times too, <laughs> Matt. I didn't believe it. Cutting inside, Harmony Turner still hasn't found anything yet. Again, all five points for Harvard are from Rodriguez. Rodriguez left open for a second from the right side. Now hits it off the dribble, and she knocks it down. Eight to start for Elena Rodriguez. Back-to-back -back triples at a six-point Harvard lead. Somebody came to play at Assembly Hall, Ben. Rodriguez, it looked like she was going to put it up the first time. Took a shot fake and a dribble, and that's two for two from beyond the arc. How about that start? Indiana having trouble again in front of the Harvard bench, and a jump ball called right in front of that bench. Indiana got the tip. So that is another Indiana turnover. It'll go Harvard's way. And a substitution for Indiana. Lily Meister checks out of the game. Caroline Striplin, the Tennessee transfer, in for the Hoosiers. Striplin played just 13 minutes versus Brown in the opener. 17.6 of 8 from the field. That's about as efficient as it gets. We'll see what she brings tonight. Pretty good points per minute number right there. Pull-up jumper from Turner. A little bit too strong. Now here's zone clears. Chesky picked up her dribble on the left side. Stripland's calling for it. And not in great position. You mentioned a nice debut for Stripland in her first game. Chesky a screen to her left. And a three-second call on Indiana. Sydney Paris was camped down there. And another Indiana turnover. And this is incredible. I think it's a huge testament to Carrie Moore and everything that she's trying to establish with the Crimson identity. They're going to play defense. They're going to get up on you. They're not going to play afraid. And that's how it's been so far. Indiana just two points, and we're under six minutes in the first quarter. And a Sandvik checks into the game for Indiana. The Terry Morin versus Carrie Moore matchup here at Indiana versus Harvard. And this time a Harvard turnover. There's an offensive foul off ball. I think it was Garzone who drew it. Didn't catch who they called it on. I think it's on Krupa. Yeah, it's going to go on Kate Krupa, who's the first substitution of the game now for Harvard. Here's that press we knew Harvard would come with and intercepted. And an easy layup on the other end for Lydia Hatira. And Terry Morin is not happy. She wants to talk it over. It's a 10-2 lead for Harvard after forcing Indiana to turn the ball over on three consecutive possessions. They lead by eight halfway through the first quarter. First five minutes have been all Harvard here from Assembly Hall. They take a 10-2 lead over Indiana. Three consecutive possessions with a turnover for the Hoosiers, and Terry Morin wasn't happy. Not at all. And this is stemming from an aggressive post-game press conference on Monday night. We talked about the vocabulary she used, the sloppiness. She called out her grad senior point guard and Chloe Moore McNeil, said that she wasn't ready to play, Ben, and the Hoosiers have come out slow. Yeah, and this is all part of Carrie Moore's plan, the head coach for Harvard. Uh, she preaches defense, and it's full screen, full court defense, and that's the Harvard identity that they've, they've started to take and take on. You didn't know, you know, one game you get a lot of first game jitters, 34 turnovers, though. That's got to be a combination for UMass to playing Harvard. That's got to be a combination of the, the first game jitters and then just the Harvard playing tough defense. They stay in the full court press. And we knew they would. 
Come with it. They lead by eight. Indiana breaks it. Sandvik to the middle. Now Garzone tries a three. And just a little wide right. Indiana keeps it. Here's zone, the only two points for Indiana, and another bad pass. This one's picked up by Turner, and she finishes again. A 10-point lead for Harvard. Terry Morin talked about she knew the full-court press was coming, but she told her team before the best way to beat a press is to not let them press, and you do that by uh, not letting them score, so not giving them a chance to set up their press. Now Paris tries a three. That's it and out. Something really interesting, Ben. Indiana didn't specifically work on a press break in their walkthrough. It's just kind of something short that they talked about, to your point, about playing good defense, and it is proving costly right now. Down 10 early. Just two points. Hoosier still looking for their first field goal of the game as well. Now Krupa tries to drive. Anderson working on the right side. Rodriguez has eight so far. Krupa tries a three. No luck. And a nice rebound by Anderson at first. And she dribbled it off her leg. Or no, yes, it is going to go the other way. So it's Chloe Moore, McNeil, and Yarden Garzoni who are going to try to break this press. Parrish is the one they like to have inbounding it. And if Indiana can get the ball to Moore, McNeil, that's they feel like they have a the best chance. She caught a double team, and now they work it to the other end. Into the paint, another double team, and a jump ball call. This time will stay with Indiana after Harvard got the first. Ben, this isn't just a good press. When they get into the half court, Harvard is swarming the Hoosiers. Moore McNeil goes to her strong side to the left hand. There's two, there's two black jerseys surrounding her there. Here's Owen trying to inbound. Gets it up to a little jump ball between Moore McNeil and Sandvik. And Moore McNeil gave her a funny face. Now a senior tries to drive inside. Nice up and under for Indiana's first field goal. Courtesy of Chloe Moore McNeil and a nifty move. Good move. Chloe Moore McNeil, 11th in the nation with a plus 2.8 assist to turnover ratio. Look for her to hold on to the ball more. Under four to go on the first, and a nice sweet jumper on the pull up from Harmony Turner. That's what she does so well. Works really well in the mid range. Garzone almost got caught there in the backcourt. Moore McNeil falls. Indiana still able to keep possession. They had a foul as they try to get it to strip him down low. Luke, that's seven turnovers already for Indiana. So not quite on pace. Actually, I don't know the exact math. It seems about on pace for the 34 they, they forced on Monday. It's right there. And I'm taking a long glance at Terry Morin on the Hoosier bench. I mean, she's just licking her chops, ready to get this team back to the bench to chew them out. This is not Indiana basketball, and especially not Terry Morin Indiana basketball. Nice set piece to get Garzone open, but a moving screen on Indiana. That's going to count. It's another one of those turnovers. I think they got Sidney Parrish for it. It was a good set there. Obviously, the pick is what freed Garzone for the open look. But if Garzone gets that open on a legal screen, look out because she's a marksman from beyond the arc. Harley White into the game now for Harvard. This is Anderson on the right side and a rejection from Sidney Parrish. We talked about Indiana going to have to rely on their defense a little bit this season with a lot of their scoring leaving, and City Parish a big part of that. A lot of the Indiana absence of scoring looks at as all-time leading scorer Mackenzie Holmes, but so far tonight I'm seeing the absence of Sarah Scalia. She could handle it in the two-guard position, obviously shoot the lights out, and they're missing her right now. How about this on the right side? It's the return to Indiana for Mona Zarich. Spent two years with the Hoosiers, now with Harvard. Now Turner with a pull-up jumper. That's pure. Cannot give Harmony Turner that much room. And a 14-2 run for the Crimson. Indiana just has a couple of free throws and then that Chloe Moore McNeil up and under. Nice move, Garzone cuts inside and she's able to put their second field goal up. With the, the Holmes and the Scalia leaving, it's all about, you know, a lot of the role players came back. You look at Moore McNeil, Parrish, and Garzone. Plenty of playing time the last couple of seasons. Zarich misses. On a three from the right side, but Harvard got it back. And Gabby Anderson puts it through. 20 points in Harvard's game on Monday. She's on the board here. Indiana just not there to corral the rebound. That's an easy stick back. Already given up 18 in the first quarter. A rough start defensively. They need to start turning good defense into offensive chances. Now Garzone tried to use her size and drew a double team. That's more McNeil open, but she couldn't connect. 
Turner on the pick and roll to Zarich, and I think she got a few more defenders than she expected, and Zarich took an extra step there. But pretty cool story here for Zarich, making a return to Indiana, like I said. Five starts a season to go for Harvard in her first season there. Just appeared in 24 games in her, in her first two seasons combined when she was here in Bloomington. She does play overseas in Serbia, though. Averaged 21, 8, and 4 playing there. Playing all over the place. Big 10 out of the Ivy League and obviously back home in Serbia. It's probably one of the tougher environments at Assembly Hall. Nearing the end of the first and another Indiana turnover. Meister could not corral it. And nice movement to get a three ball on the left side. And it hits. Car, that's Elena Rocco who hit that one, the freshman. Making her impact early on this game in a 15-point Harvard lead with a minute to go in the first. Ben, don't look now, but the Crimson turn over the Hoosiers again. They're up Turnover 15. number 10 for Indiana. It is just the first quarter. This is not just a slow start or a hot start on their respective sides. Harvard is dominating every aspect of this basketball game through the first nine minutes. We'll see what Turner can do. Nice pass into the corner for Glenn Bello. But Glenn Bello stepped out of bounds in the corner. And Shea Chesky checks back into the game for Indiana. They need more better guard play to limit these turnovers. This might be the Chesky move. You mentioned that. More and I don't think it's going to be a happy huddle after the, in the next 55 seconds when she gets her team back in the bench. Yeah, but it's a little bit different from that Brown game. Indiana handedly won that game. They were up huge at halftime, 39 to 21. Now you're looking at, hey, we got to start playing, and we got to start playing to win, not just for the sake of our resume or getting better in the second game. A lot of contact as Garzon was working towards the paint, and they're going to call it a block. May have gotten away with a little push-up, but... They're going to say the Harvard defender was out of position. Take another we'll take look a look at, at it here. again, and yeah. Definitely not set there. That's the right call. No position for Abigail Wright. Foul called on her. Nice pass to get to Meister, but Meister can't handle it. On the ground, taken by Harvard again. Here comes Glenn Bello. It's a 2-1-2. She takes it herself. Doesn't hit rim. Now about a two-second differential between shot and game clock for the Hoosiers. Look at this on-ball pressure, Ben, all over the place. Nice backdoor cut. Sidney Parrish had a nice pass, so Parrish will have a couple of shots at the line. It was a good find by Garzon. That's a heck of a find. That's a rainbow pass, probably about over 20 feet of distance, dropped right into the breadbasket, and that's what it's taking to get to the free throw line for this Indiana offense. It's an Indiana team, Ben, in 2023-24, they set four new program records. Field goal percentage was one of them. Three-pointers made was one of them. They finished 26-6, and six and they didn't lose at home. After the first quarter, they're going to be down double digits with just six or eight points. And Paris can't connect on the first free throw. He's a pure shooter, 79% from the line a season ago, 40% from three, sharp shooter. But three for five from the charity stripe in the first game against Brown. She gets the second one to fall. So they cut the deficit to 14, but now Harvard can hold for the last shot already with a 14-point lead over the number 25 Indiana Hoosiers in Assembly Hall. Harmony Turner is going to start with the ball. Five seconds now. Rodriguez takes a deep three, just misses. Rebound will be tipped out, and the buzzer will sound before the ball hits anywhere. How about this? Harvard with a 21-7. Shocking first half from Assembly Hall, 21-7. The lead for the Harvard Crimson. And Terry Morin not happy with her team through the first quarter, wants to limit those turnovers. Morin is all these Indiana connections. Obviously was spent a lot of time at Indiana State before coming here at Indiana. Talked about in the first quarter, her three-year span of the last few seasons. And uh, she's seen it all uh, between offensive and and defensive performances, and once again, I, there's there's not many ways to say she won't be happy with this one. I you look at her mantras. I don't know which one of these is is pertains here. Share the sugar. Maybe they're sharing the sugar too much. Some of these passes are are not going the way Indiana won. I would say it's if you're juiceless, you're useless. And the Hoosiers, they come out flat. They're getting outplayed. They're getting out hustled. 
Harvard has come into Assembly Hall and they're trying to knock off a top 25 team and they're playing like an Indiana flat once again and they find themselves in a double digit hole then. Harvard gets the ball on the possession coming out of the first quarter break. Harmony Turner, the star for Harvard, nice pull up jumper. That's tough, Chesky couldn't do anything about it. And once again, the more Harvard scores, the more they can set up this press. And Indiana just wants to give the ball to more McNeil. But Luke, it hasn't just been the full court press that's had Indiana, made Indiana turn the ball over. No, it's Harvard just flying around the court. Indiana, nobody really wants the basketball right now. Paris takes her on her own this time, but that's just a bad shot. They get the offensive board. And now Chesky wants to drive baseline. Nice little floater through some contact. Shea Chesky with her first bucket of the game. Indiana just trying to settle in. A couple baskets, getting back, getting set defensively could do the trick. Good switch there. Now here's Anderson. Sydney Paris was giving her trouble. We've seen good defensive possessions from her today. And she got bumped as she tried to bring down the board. It's a big quarter here for Indiana. They come out of the break. They started flat, sure, settle in, get the home crowd behind you, cut this to single digits. They're obviously the better team. Chloe Moore McNeil could be the one to start. Perfect. And they got two seconds to get the ball past half court, and it's taken away by Harvard. And once again, it's Harmony Turner right there to put it back in. They keep that 16-point lead and keep bothering Indiana. Turner, the first player in double figures tonight. Speaking of juice, she is juice. She plays defense, she can score at every level. One of the best players, not just in the Ivy League, but in the entire country, Ben. Meister goes to her left and finishes through contact. The and one for Lily Meister might be the boost they needed. And anything to get the fans into this game and to make this assembly hall environment a real assembly environment. That was Gabby Anderson on the foul right there. Yeah, Ben, we mentioned 15-0 last year at home. This is easily not just a landmark basketball arena in all of college basketball, both men's and women's, but the women, they defend it. They beat Iowa here last year, and to start this slow against Harvard, the first roar of the game coming after this and one. Meister completes it. That's her first three points of the game. And, you know, we've talked so much about Harvard's defense and forcing turnovers. But Harvard, I mean, Indiana doesn't have any answers for them on the defensive side of things. I mean, Harvard is, is scoring from many different levels. They're playing very quick. It's the first time they've really had a miscommunication. They keep the ball on the bounce. They move it a lot. Five on the shot clock. Turner tries to take it herself. Hit finish, but got her own board. And she just tried to pass it through too many Hoosiers. And finally, we have a kick ball on Harvard. Turner, more penetration on the dribble drive there. She wants that back with a little more touch off the window, but Harvard consistently getting good looks. That one came late in the shot clock on a broken possession. 25 points for just about the eight minute mark. Indiana really needs to strap in defensively. Yeah, Turner has 10, Rodriguez has eight. So that's 18 of those 25 right there coming from those two. Chesky gets the ball. 22. Yeah. Chesky gets the ball past half court without any problems. Now they're going to try to work it into Meister again. They like that matchup. They liked it against Gabby Anderson. That was a mismatch. But it seems like Elena Rodriguez is who they've liked to have on Meister, and she's done a pretty good job on her. But this time she's forced to foul. Now it's right on her coming out of the break, uh, out of the Underneath out of bounds, and she gets it again and finishes. This time on the underneath out of bounds play by Terry Morin. She drew it up. They cut the deficit to just 11. And Indiana fans on their feet. Harris tried to come with a double team. Rodriguez passes out of it. Three ball from the corner. No good. And out of bounds off Indiana. Questionable call there. Lily Meister. Looked like she had it knocked out in between her hands. She was extremely surprised that that stays on this end of the floor. Nonetheless, Indiana, a good start to the defensive possession needs to finish it off here. That looks like yeah, about a 50-50 call when we looked at it there. Nice pump fake, Elena Rodriguez gets it in the paint, and she can't finish. Now more McBeal works it over to Garzone. 
Indiana couldn't capitalize in transition there. They had a little bit of a step ahead. Well, McBeal, Indiana fans thought there was a foul, but Harvard takes it away. Great defense from Rocco there. Turner pull up jumper and misses it again. And another offensive rebound for Harvard. That's been another problem for Indiana. Indiana bodies inside, they're there. They're in the paint, but they're not boxing out anyone. You got to put a body on a body. And as of right now, Harvard getting a lot of their own misses. Indiana playing better defense. Harvard's 0 for, 0 for their last four, haven't scored in exactly two minutes. Stripling comes into the game for Meister. 17 on the shot clock right now for the Crimson. Double team now, Rodriguez passes out of it. White. Right. On the left side, Harvard has to get a shot off soon. They force it inside, and Nana takes it away. No numbers, so Garzon will slow things down. And tries to go baseline, work on the smaller defender. And this time, Indiana fans really unhappy with the foul. They're letting a lot go. Chesky had it, and a jump ball was called between Shea Chesky and Carly White. I think it may have been a foul underneath on Garzone, but a great hustle play from Chesky, putting her body on the line, getting it back with the possession arrow in favor of the home Hoosiers. IU chance starting up here in assembly. It's been at least a minute since either team has scored. Still an 11 point lead for Harvard. Nice off ball screen action, but Yard and Garzone, they couldn't find it. The ball was tipped out of bounds. Turnovers has definitely cleaned up for Indiana here in this second quarter. They had 11 in the first, only one in the second. Rocco playing big minutes defensively. She blocked more McNeil a couple of trips ago. She knocks that one out of bounds. That could have pre prevented a wide open Garzone three. A conversation here between the officials and more before Indiana gets it in. Stripling almost threw it away. Triplin so physical underneath. Here's zone through contact again. The second time is called a charge. So there was contact up top, and then another time that was Glenn Bello trying to take a charge, and Glenn Bello successful. This defensive effort starts at the root of the coaching staff, and it's all carry more because they all play on the same pace, the same timing. They put their bodies on the line. Turner's their starting guard, their lead sco leading scorer, back-to-back first-team All-Ivy. She's doing the same things that everyone else is, and that's a testament to carry more and what she's doing with this Harvard defense. After the foul, Hanna Sandvik checks in for Garzone. Glenn Bello, the one that drew the charge, works it inside. Hand off to Turner, who goes baseline. Nice. Dish out to Rodriguez, goes inside and gets fouled. Indiana fans thought it was the same play as last one, but I think this one's the right call. Didn't look like she was set there to me, Ben. I think it's extra frustrating when you get the charge yeah. called on you on the other end of the floor. Nonetheless, Rodriguez going to the line. She hasn't scored in the second quarter after putting up eight quick ones in the first couple minutes. But they're really playing through her. When she gets the ball, good things are happening for the Crimson. Yeah, what a start to the season for Rodriguez as she knocks down the first. She had 18 in that Monday win over UMass. 18 to go with eight rebounds, three assists as well. Already a couple of three balls in this game. Only attempted one and made it on Monday. Only a 50% trip at the line. So it extends the lead to 12. Just a little over halfway through the second quarter. Or McNeil rejects a screen, going to take it herself, plus the foul. Chloe Moore McNeil with the crafty move. And she got bumped, she finishes anyway. Just going and back and forth yeah. with Moore McNeil. You don't really see that too often in college basketball. Went all the way the length of the floor, just cutting it, and then eventually finishes on her left-hand side for the N1 finish. That's a beautiful play from the grad senior guard. Well, we said it in the first half, and just it. Good things are going to happen, especially with the pressure of Harvard. Good things are going to happen when Chloe Moore McNeil has the ball in her hand. She can handle it better than anyone on this Indiana team. She completes the three-point play here. First time Indiana's been within single digits since halfway through that first quarter. 26-17, Harvard lead. 
The Indiana fans starting to get loud again. Glenn Bello comes off the screen to the left side, has it taken away, but Rodriguez right back, and she traveled. Elena Rodriguez confused about the call. But Terry Morin's squad was able to force a turnover for them. Big trip here for the Hoosiers. Chance to cut it. Continually inside of single digits, maybe even cut it to six with a triple. Crowd is certainly behind them right now. Four turnovers in less than four minutes, the last four minutes for Harvard now. So Flip has switched a little bit. Willie Meister on the second chance, no. She wants that one back. A wide open layup for 52 inside is normally 100%. Not that time, though. Now Meister active on the defensive side. They turn it over. Now right back to Harvard. Rodriguez, a nice move. Up and in. She's got 11. Elena Rodriguez, how do you do? You faked the whole assembly hole with that fake. Now she's well above double figures. That's her 11th point of the night. Rodriguez coming to play. Or McNeil now draws a defender. Sandvik for three, just barely grazed the rim on the far side. Indiana has a lot of three-point shooters on this team. That's one of their strengths coming into the season. And they hit a lot of them on Monday, but not much success beyond the arc today. And on the other end, a foul. On a three-point attempt, Rodriguez will have three shots when we come back from has three free throws coming up as we are halfway through the second quarter, already with an 11-point Harvard lead. First Rodriguez. free throw, good for Rodriguez. She's playing with such confidence right now. She really has this aura about her. Every time she has the ball, she's looking right at the rim. You said it best before we go to break, before we went to break. You know, it, it felt like the best possessions, that's, that was only a two check that they reviewed it there at the TV timeout. So a two for two trip for Rodriguez and a 13 point lead for Harvard. But it seems like Harvard's best offensive possessions have come when Rodriguez has had the ball. Nice. Behind the back crossover by Garazone and she knocks down the mid range. Right in Garazone now for Indiana trying to lead the way. She has six. Nice cut. This time, Zaric, welcome back to Bloomington, finishes. Harvard, such an easy but efficient offense. A dribble drive, a quick cut, someone popping for three. They're getting all the looks right now. Or McNeil thought about a pull-up. They're trying to work it inside. Striplett in the game now for Meister. Chesky fires, but can't connect. Nice job trying to deflect that. It goes out of bounds off of Indiana. And Went to the floor there. Lydia Hatira did. Indiana really trying to get Shea Chesky going. Obviously, can't replace Sarah Scalia and her dominance in the Big Ten, but Chesky 0 for 3 from beyond the arc in the first game. Hasn't made one yet tonight. Supposed to be their starting shooting guard. When Bello fires from the right side, she can knock those down. Indiana's got a little bit of a zone, and they pick it up. Chesky 3 on 2 now, beating the defense down the floor. More McNeil, nice dish inside to Striplett, who draws a foul. And More McNeil creating plays once again for this Indiana team. More McNeil finally settling in. I think the press got to her early, and now she took a deep breath, reevaluated her style, and boy, is she smooth. The lefty can dish it, she can score, and that's what they're going to lean on this year, especially with Striplin. She didn't play huge minutes, but we talked about just how strong she was in the opener on Monday night, trying to settle in as a Hoosier. Obviously, that first week nerves. Yet to miss a free throw, though. Yeah, Striplin started 10 games a season ago for Tennessee. Came over to Indiana because they knew there'd be a, a McKenzie Holmes-sized hole to fill on this Indiana team. And it's not about one player filling it, but maybe her combining with Lily Meister to get some of that production. And she goes two for two from the charity stripe there. Cuts that deficit to 11, and here you come out with that Indiana 2-3 zone. Rodriguez gets the ball in the middle of the zone, and that's the second time in the last few possessions we've seen a travel from Elena Rodriguez. Maybe the zone is working for Indiana. Just trying to get too quick of a start there from Rodriguez. Final three minutes of the first half, Ben. This is huge for both teams. We'll see what Indiana can draw up. 
Ball screen action, Stripling set it for more McNeil. Now they get it to Garzone on the right side. She hits. Yard end, Garzone knocks it down and hypes the crowd up. Indiana within eight. The closest it's been since midway through the first quarter. And Assembly Hall is starting to feel it. Indiana starting to make shots and take care of the ball a lot better. Harvard trying to fix some of those problems when we get back. I think we're going to do an inner. Yardinger's zone on the other end of that timeout. Knocked down a three. Harvard and Kerry Moore wanted to talk some things over. And stop this Indiana momentum. Hatira's bringing the ball up the floor now for Harvard. Zarich with it on the right wing. Rodriguez has been the star for the Crimson today. And a foul on Harvard. When Rodriguez was handing the ball off, they're going to say she, she gave a little bit of a shoulder to the defender. She's had a couple of travel calls. Now the offensive foul off ball, and she's been frustrated with those last few turnovers. I'm not so sure about that one. The referees have called a very physical game thus far and let a lot of things go that seem ticky-tack on a dribble drive. Now Paris tries, top of the key. Jaws too strong. Stripling couldn't pull it down in the sea of Crimson. Glenn Bello had an easy path all the way through. Now a three on the right side. Sarich, he can't hit. Indiana getting better looks consistently now on the offensive end, trying to cut into this deficit. Here's Zone, she's a threat to shoot it, so she got a step on her defender, and the help came, she got bumped. Here's Zone will have a couple of free throws. Leading Indiana so far and scoring today with nine. And Meister comes back in for Strickland. I think this is the jump that a lot have been expecting out of Garzone. She's just so athletic, she can put it on the deck, obviously can shoot it from three, but if she's gonna lead the charge for Indiana, she needs to rely on Chloe Moore, McNeil, and Sydney Parrish to give her some help offensively, and that's been the difference so far for the Hoosiers. Knocks down the first. It's the second trip to the free throw line of the day for Garzone, and she's now three for three on those attempts. And she hits both. All of a sudden, this lead is down to six. We near halftime. Indiana was down by as much as 15, and they have made it six. Everyone on their feet in Assembly Hall. Hatira brings the ball up the floor for Harvard. Indiana in that 2-3 zone with Chesky and Moore McNeil at the top. Rodriguez tries to drive inside. Three ball from the right side, in and out. Indiana grabs the board. Moore McNeil up ahead of the pack. It's the middle of the paint. Parrish fires and left it short this time. Parrish has not had a ton of luck from the three-point line. But a nice play by Chesky to win that ball and keep it with the Hoosiers. Parrish hasn't seemed to get it going from beyond the arc just yet this season. One of six in the opener. Now 0 for 3 so far tonight. There's zone having trouble. Finally finds more McNeil up on the left side. Mormick deals calling out for a screen. There's nobody to pass it to. They got nine on the shot clock. Now Garzone contested three. No luck. And a foul on Harvard. A bump from Kate Koopa. As Meister went to the floor. And again, we take a look at the replay up on the video board. I'm not so sure about it. Looked like Meister just went to the floor, but Indiana will take that. Two free throws coming up for Lily Meister now that Indiana is and the bonus. And a way for Hannah Sandvik to check into the game for Chesky. Harvard, eight team fouls. It seems like 
They've been on the other end of a couple questionable calls that could have been playthroughs or even gone the other way. The home Hoosiers, though, benefiting off that. Meiser was one for one from the line before this one. She had an and one earlier in the game. Take a look at the replay. I, I don't Just seemed like see, they were all jumping for not it. Not sure man. if I saw much of a push, but Meister gets two free throws out of it, and she capitalizes. It is a four-point game here at Assembly Hall. Still a minute to go. Eight-nothing run for Indiana here in the first, or second quarter. First half ended. Hatira trying to beat the zone. Ever since Indiana went to this 2-3 zone, Harvard has had issues. Ten of the shot clock with the ball in Rucco's hand. And Bello, pass fake, gets inside, and it's taken by Garzone. Seven second differential between shot and game clock. So Indiana can't hold for the last shot. And, and obviously can't go two for one. And Garzone's going to slow things down. She's had the hot hand today for the Hoosiers. Now Paris had a decent amount of room. Now drives inside with her left. A nice finish. Sydney Paris, Indiana. It's a one possession game. Harvard will hold for the last shot here. Hatira with the ball. And a screen to her left. Five seconds, pull up three pointer. Barely grazes the rim. And it'll go to Indiana with two seconds left. The Hoosiers have turned it up, Ben. To cut this deficit to just one possession before half. Maybe even tie it or take the lead. It's not over just yet. Two seconds more. McNeil past half court. Floats it up and just too strong off the backboard. I think she was a little late on that as well. So Harvard was up 14 at the end of the first quarter. Indiana able to cut it all the way back to two. They won that second quarter by 12 points. No points for Harvard in the last four minutes of the second quarter. The zone defense gave it a fix. Absolutely. Indiana finished the final three minutes of the quarter or half on an 11-0 run. That's Hoosier basketball. Now we have ourselves a ball game. Check up. Both ready to play come the second half. We'll be back. Our Josie Broyles is uh, aside with Harvard head coach Kip Jensen. The associate head coach steps up. She got her first win with Iowa of her career. Yeah, it's a new era in Iowa City. Obviously, Bluter, a legendary head coach, but also with the passing of the torch with her yeah. came Caitlin Clark as well. So new faces all around the Big Ten. We have conference realignment, but we're ready for the second half at Assembly Hall. We have a two-point ball game. Ben, take it away. Yeah, Iowa expected to finish about middle of the pack of the Big Ten this season, uh, which is rare for the last couple of seasons. Harvard gets the ball coming out of the break. They still have a two-point lead over the number 25 team in the country with Indiana, and they want to get the ball in this hands right now with Turner. They don't mind Rodriguez either. And Rodriguez will get it back with 10 on the shot clock. Now Gabby Anderson tries to make a move, gets inside and can't finish with her left, so Indiana takes over. Good defensive start for the Hoosiers. Turner had to sit for a couple minutes with her two fouls in the second quarter. Interested to see what she can bring offensively now with some fresh legs. Yeah, Carrie Moore before, said before the break that she just wasn't happy with how much her team was fouling. Lily Meister uses her body to get some separation and a nice baby hook. This game is all tied up at 32. Indiana has worked all the way back. 0-0, zero, zero, check up and 19 minutes to play. Now Harvard's going to try to go inside. Rodriguez cross-court pass is tipped. Now Glenn Bello gets into the paint. Almost had an open look, but had uh, the ball deflected away, and she throws it away in the backcourt. That's going to be an over and back. Harvard turnover to start this second. That's Glenn Bello's fourth turnover. I talked to, excuse me, I saw Harmony Turner talking to Glenn Bello at the break, holding both of her hands, looking into the eye. We need you. Stay into this game. A bad turnover to start the third quarter. She's going to take a rest. Indiana inbounds to Moore McNeil. Starting five back into the game for the Hoosiers. Chesky, Moore McNeil, Parrish, Gerzon, and Meister with the ball right there. And she's got her second baby hook to start this game off, start this half off, rather, and Indiana leads. Lily Meister, the teardrop touch. Great start to the half for her. But wide open, nice dish from Turner to Rodriguez, and Rodriguez is there to put it through. They tie things back up, and this might be that back and forth battle that we get after it was so lopsided in that first half. Here's Owen finally gets it cross past half court. Meister had an open Paris, but her pass deflected. Nice job defensively by Anderson. 
And another turnover for the Hoosiers. Another confusing call on Lily Meister. I think her right pivot foot, which was her plant foot, may have moved just a little bit towards the sideline. They get her with a turnover on the travel. 26 combined turnovers today for both of these teams. Not the cleanest brand of basketball played today in Assembly Hall, but it's been competitive. Now in a tie game, 34-34. Turner tries to get inside the paint. Look at that defense from Chesky. And she's getting on the floor too. That'll be called a jump ball. That's Indiana's possession. This is gritty basketball, Ben. And Indiana can play it, but they averaged 80 points per game last year. So a little bit unfamiliar territory, I think, for both teams. This stuff kind of comes, these 50-50 balls, all hands on deck, with just the first week of the season. The transfer portal, the freshmen playing, new faces everywhere just trying to mesh and mold together. So you're going to see that all over college basketball in the opening week. A double team now on Chesky, though. Yeah, Harvard has not scored, if you go back to the third quarter, the last about eight minutes of this game, they haven't scored much. So they haven't had many opportunities to set up that full court press. They finally had one there with a turnover. So Indiana able to beat it. Now Garzone from the corner and hit every part of the rim, but can't fall. Now Hatira working on the left side. Left Rodriguez open for just a little bit. Way too strong on her attempt. And Turner takes it away. Harvard keeps it. Another attempt on the right side. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Elena Rocco. Huge for momentum for Harvard. I mean, stats don't tell the whole story. That three could easily get booked for Harmony Turner. Stealing the ball off the Indiana rebound. She is the best player on Harvard. She is the best scorer. But she does the dirty work as well, Harmony Turner. Give her credit for that open look for three. Harvard takes the lead right back. Indiana throws it right into the middle of the paint. And Rocco's just going to slow things down. But open to the left corner is Anderson who knocks it down. Back to back threes. And all of a sudden, Harvard takes that six point lead back. It had a feeling that once Indiana started to come back and take the lead, I didn't know how well Harvard would respond, but they responded pretty well. Yeah, Anderson scored scored 20 points in the opener, four of seven from three, been extremely quiet. Let's see if she heats up in the second half. Garzon got bumped a little bit, and off ball foul on Harford. Something Moore said she wanted to fix, and Caroline Striplin checks into the game for Meister. And something to note, Anderson and Turner combining for 15 points. Turner with 10, Anderson with 5. These are the two leading scorers on this Harvard team through the first game of the season, both well over double figures in the opener. And they're not even playing their best basketball offensively. Harvard may play deep into the fourth quarter with the Hoosiers tonight. Chesky tries it from the right side. She's a bit too strong, right into the hands of Striplett, who can't finish. Couple of decent looks for Indiana right there, and they can't find the bottom of the net on either. And Chesky got a little too handsy with Hatira. The Harvard guard play is just so confident right now. They're putting the ball on the deck, and I almost want to challenge Chloe Moore McNeil to do the same. She's talented enough to break the press on her own. It looks like Indiana is trying to share the rock a little too much, and they're becoming complacent and slow with the basketball. Harvard the opposite to start half number two. Terry Moore's message to Indiana at the shoot-around was... What does it mean when you have a number beside your name? It means you're going to get every team's best shot. And they have gotten Harvard's best shot today. Awkward play on the left side by Rodriguez, but she got fouled. That's on Lamondola, who's newly checked into this game for Indiana. Rodriguez at six foot two, just pulled off a dribble combination that you see sometimes only in the NBA. It was a little fake shot, put it on the deck. It ended up drawing a foul. Now on the left side, Turner knocks it through. That's three three balls for Harvard in the last few possessions. And they have this lead back up to nine. Indiana had tied it up, but even taken a lead to start the third quarter. Moore McNeil tries to go in herself. Alexia push there at the end of the play after Moore McNeil was fouled between her and Hatira. Nothing more after that. Moore McNeil just seems really quiet out there, not just with her player on the stat sheet, but typically a vocal leader of this team. You see the frustration, a two-hand push to the lower half, not too much behind it, but Harvard heating up from three, and it's getting in the heads of the ranked Indiana Hoosiers at home. Yeah, we talked about how, you know, unhappy Mord was after a 22-point win over Brown in the first game. And one of the first players she brought up, just because of the 
the standard she holds her players to was Chloe Moore McNeil, who's at the free throw line right now and could knock down the first free throw. <laughs> Indiana fans, that's the way things have gone today. They drill by nine. But uh, for Moore McNeil, it was about on the court and off the court stuff, being a leader. They needed her to step up and be that leader. She goes one for two at the free throw line here to cut the deficit to eight. Turner, though, she you can't give her any room. Now Rocco tries another one. Left it short. They had a trickle out of bounds. Go to Indiana. Almost an opposite start to the first half. It was Indiana turning it over, Harvard getting easy ones. To start half number two in the third quarter, Harvard snipers from beyond the arc. Both teams playing a little bit slower, but Indiana not scoring offensively. A travel on Caroline Striplin before the contact between her and Gabby Anderson down low. Harvard comes out of the half strong, able to come back. They have an eight-point lead, 43-35 Harvard. on the court, but they do have her support off of the court. Uh, named a grad manager in July, July 1st, not too long ago. She decided to go get knee surgery before the NBA WNBA season started. So played her last game in March, declared for that WNBA draft after an outstanding career in Bloomington. She ran out of eligibility, but she's still helping out the team and helping out the, the two posts that are here to uh, to help replace that Mackenzie Holmes sized hole with uh, Caroline Striplin and Lily Meister. Still trail by eight. Harvard has the ball coming out of it. Last call was a Striplin travel inside after Indiana fans thought there should have been a defensive foul. Hatira almost lost it, was able to get it to the corner. Now Turner with the ball in her hands with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Rocco, nice pass to the corner. Corner three, Zaric in and out on the three-point attempt. And Sandvik's newly checked into the game. She grabs the board. Moore McNeil going all the way. Three from the corner, Lamondola hits it. Welcome to the game, Juliana Lamondola. Back to a five-point game now. And once again, one of those plays that can give Assembly Hall a little bit of energy. Lamondola just averaging nine minutes per game last year, comes in for the first time late into the second half, a huge three to give this home crowd a spark. You wonder what the decision was to not play her in the first half and then throw her in here now. Obviously after Indiana wasn't playing up to Terry Moore in standards. Yeah, this is interesting. Gotta think maybe they just want to try something new. Air ball on the other end on a three-point attempt. Indiana fans let him know. And a nice dish from Garzone to Striplin. Indiana again back within one possession. Under four to go here in the third quarter. Quick 5-0 run out of the timeout. That's exactly what Morin drew up. Crowd now into it. Need a stop here and then a chance to tie. Harmony Turner calling off her screen for a little bit, waiting. Sandvik's the one on her. Works all the way to the top of the free throw line. Now they rely on Hatira to work into the paint. Five seconds for Zaric. Goes over to her left. What a finish, Moda Zaric. Zaric. The left hand step through on her own, or her old home floor. And making her presence felt yeah. at Assembly Hall. She's used to this court a little bit. She's made some of those moves here. Garzone barrels through the middle of the paint, stripping with a board, and a foul before the basket. So no basket. It's on the ground. Indiana will inbound. I think that's the right call. And take a look at it again. Yeah, the call was right there before. It was right when she grabbed it. Kind of had a tough look from that angle on the replay. Three subs coming in now for Harvard. Carly White checks into the game alongside Rodriguez, who comes back in. In battle, Amendola, another open look from the right side. This time she missed everything, but Meister with the offensive board. Moore McNeil, other side, no chance. Meister keeps going, and Harmony Turner takes it away. She does it in all kinds of ways, offensive side and the defensive side. Takes it from the bigger Meister there, and he got fouled on a fadeaway. So Harmony Turner, after the nice defensive play, will have a couple of free throws coming up. Harmony Turner telling the crowd she wants more. Bring it on with the right hand. 14 in black and crimson can play. I love her game, just so smooth, can drive it in, obviously, can shoot it from beyond the arc. 
Just a true leader of this team in everything that a coach can dream of. Parrish comes in for Lamondola, and Lamondola gets a standing ovation. Nice spark with that three-pointer. Yeah, Harmony Turner was named to that mid-major player of the year watch list at the beginning of the season, and for good reason. You look at what she did a season ago. First team, all Ivy League, averaged almost 20 a game, and she misses both free throws here. Indiana battles for the rebound, but they take it with 2.30 to go in the quarter. Jeez, that was uncharacteristic. Shot it at 77% from the free throw line last season was Turner. You got to start to think a team like Harvard, they don't play any many outstanding environments like Assembly Hall. This Assembly Hall was top five in the country a season ago in women's basketball attendance. I think Yard and Garzone might want that one back. They actually were going to give it, give her the bucket for the and one if this layup fell. Bounced the defender off of her and just not enough touch with the right hand. Garzone leading the way for the Hoosiers though with 11, tied with Meister. Able to knock down the first. Garzone up to this point has been automatic for the free throw line. Just three for seven from the field and she is a sharpshooter. She gets her name from the three-point line, but only one for four for three in this game. But six for six at the charity strike, and it's back to a one-possession game. 45-42, Harvard still leads. Final two minutes of the third quarter, Ben. Who is going to have the momentum heading into the final quarter of play? It's another travel for Harvard from Elena Rodriguez. That's her third travel in the last couple of quarters, her fourth turnover. And be getting a little ahead of herself. She still leads this Harvard team in scoring with 15. Warren McNeil and Parrish quiet of recent. Nice pass from Garzon to Meister. It was tipped around. It'll stay with Indiana. I'll tell you what, Yard and Garzon is really making things happen on the offensive side of the ball, even when she isn't scoring. Defensively for Harvard, it's Zaric just walling up inside. Another good play there. Nice underneath that bounce play, and it leaves Lily Meister wide open. We got a one-point game under two minutes to go in the third, and once again, Assembly Hall crowd on their feet. Harmony Turner going to try to silence the crowd again like she's done a few times today. Rodriguez with the ball stagnant in the quarter. Nice drive baseline Good over pass. the help. Now Rocco tries a three. Can't hit. Indiana with the board. Sandvik Turner tips it from behind. It goes out of bounds, though. Look, I don't know. It may be a little louder, and you would have let the <laughs> would have let her know that that Turner was behind her. <laughs> but yeah, Sandvik had it poked from behind. Carrie Moore happy with her team's defensive aggressiveness to this point, but offensively, it's been stagnant. Other than those, you know, back to back to back three pointers. Harvard team is just relentless. They had 19 steals on Monday, eight blocks. They play the full four quarters defensively. They're going to give Indiana everything they can to try and drop them off in the opening week. Garzone forgot the ball. Left that to a couple of Harvard defenders. Had Rodriguez open initially. Now with one dribble, can't connect. And an over-the-back foul on Indiana. That'll stay here. Foul. Oh, that's actually on a Harvard, they're going to say. It's foul on Elena Rocco. And it is Rocco going over the top of Chloe Moore McNeil. That's the right call. Indiana will get the ball with 101 on the clock. Nice job by Moore McNeil to win that and get in the right position. And with that, that's a fifth team foul on Harvard in this quarter. So with the loose ball foul. That would mean Chloe Moore McDeal's going to the free throw line. Indiana needs to capitalize now, Ben, because they're starting to play really good defense. Harvard hasn't scored in two minutes and 14 seconds. They're on a drought of their own, but the Hoosiers need to pick it up offensively. They've been getting better looks off play, off play sets. And out of the timeout, Terry Morin has crafted up some really good looks to find Meister inside. However, off the dribble, Look for more McNeil and Parrish to start working together and get some good looks for the Indiana offense. Indiana has only led for 12 seconds today, and they're going to add on to that a little bit with a two-for-two two trip at the line for Chloe Moore McNeil under a minute to go in the third. It's a one-point Indiana lead. 
They stick with this 2-3 zone with State Chesky at the top. Pull up three-pointer from Turner, no good. And one of those issues with the 2-3 zone, tougher to rebound. Rodriguez grabs it this time. And the fresh 20 on the shot clock. Three from the left side. White hits it. Carly White, a big momentum three-pointer. Every time Indiana's grabbed momentum, it seems like Harvard's hit a big three, and they jump out, jump back out in front, 48-46. Shot clock turned off at the end of this third. That is a huge shot for Harvard. Indiana trying to tie it or take the lead here. A big trip to establish who will keep the lead, or will it be tied as we head to quarter four? I think they're going to go to the line here, though, Ben. They could have had their last. They could have held for the last shot, but it, this happened. Same thing happened earlier. I think it was before halftime where they run it, ran a set play quicker than they needed to if they really wanted to hold for the last shot. So it's Lily Meister going to the free throw line. We'll say there's a little bit of an eerie feel here inside of Assembly Hall. This was a perfect 15-0 team for Indiana last year at home, playing in front of the home crowd. And I don't think many would have predicted or circled Harvard as a team to take them to the final frame. Meister goes 0 for 2. They are riding a 18-game home non-conference winning streak, too. That's at risk here. Now Harvard gets the last shot, up by 2. Turner with the ball, an extra pass, didn't need it. And that's how the third quarter ends. So after it was all Harvard in the first, all Indiana in the second, we got a stalemate in the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up, we got a good one on Big Ten Plus. 20 from three, so that's probably why they have the lead right now if you eliminate the turnover aspect for Indiana. Harvard has played a little less aggressive. I think it comes with your stamina level coming into the fourth quarter of play, but Whoever has energy left in the tank, this is a very long stoppage, so plenty of time to talk things over. But nonetheless, I do think three-pointers and efficiency are going to be the difference. Who can knock in the three ball? So if we look back at the, the officials talking at the scores table, it looks like part of it was uh, the, the monitor was on, but it looks like they're more talking to the, uh, the official bookkeeper and looking at the book more than the actual monitor. So it could be something with fouls. Could be something with who gets the ball. I, maybe it's about who gets possession. They might have had a, a jump ball lost here or there, but look at Harvard. They're loose. They, I got nothing to lose playing with house money up by two against the number 25 team of the country at their house. Take some serious confidence. and That's the fun of it. You're a mid-major and Ivy League team. Why not come into Assembly Hall and give Indiana everything that they can handle? When you look at the book, though, I think something – besides the three-pointers to point out. Free throw attempts. Harvard has only shot six free throws. Granted, they're shooting 50%, so not very good from the charity stripe. The Hoosiers, they've shot 20 free throws. So that comes from pounding the ball on the inside. I think they need to continue to do that because the outside looks have not been falling for Indiana. Well, Indiana's had the size advantage coming into today, so you knew they were going to pound it inside like you talked about. And that's something that the fouls are almost a direct product of that. That was Terry Moran's plan coming into the game. So there was an issue with the official book just about who gets the ball coming out of the break, and it does go to Harvard. Fourth quarter started 10 minutes to go. Indiana trails by two on the verge of an upset here from Assembly Hall. Harmony Turner has the ball on the left side. She's going to need to be a key piece in this. Nice baseline drive by Rodriguez. She missed the layup. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with Harvard. But I'll tell you what, Elena Rodriguez has really had a tough time after that first quarter surge. Yes, yeah, she has. She hasn't looked very comfortable. She stayed confident, but just not the touch there on the layup. Has traveled a couple times. We'll see if she heats back up in quarter number four. They inbounded to her on the left side. One of the biggest things she has, Meister on her the center for Indiana, and she can play a lot of ways, and she misses another layup where she had good position and a costly foul on the other end. We talked about her being a little sloppy in the last two quarters of play and now the first 30 seconds of the fourth. I think that's just something that comes with playing on the road. If you have a top 25 team on the ropes, that's one thing. To finish it out is another. And you got to feel like Indiana has all the, the motivation now from Coach Moore in, in the break. They've played well at points in this game, so they know what it looks like. They know they can do that, but 
They've also played poor at many other points. And off ball, a whistle. An off ball foul on Harvard. Look out over here, Ben. Got the Are ball coming okay? after my computer. I think, I, think, I think she's doing all right. But someone who's not doing all right that I want to call on, Sydney Parrish. She had 20 points in the double-double on Monday. Just three points thus far, one of five shooting. Look for her to try and pick up some more volume in the final nine minutes. Yeah, not a lot of luck from the three-point line either today. Finally get it into Lily Meister at the end of those five seconds. She has nowhere to go with the ball in the post, but it's now out to Moore McNeil. Under 10 on the shot clock. Into the paint. Paris extra pass. Gears own tries a three. She got it. Indiana leads to start this fourth quarter. Yarden Gears own another triple. How does Harvard respond? The third quarter was all about the three-pointers in terms of responding. But Indiana's pressure has gotten to them. They have not had a lot of open looks. It's a mid-range floater, Harmony Turner. Over the taller defender, too, and she finally knocks it home. So smooth, Harmony Turner. Plays with Harmony, plays with rhythm, look out. They're really going after your computer here, Luke. Came after the crowd, Mike, too. <laughs> Paris gets pushed there, ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Indiana right here near the scores table. And that was a foul called on Harvard, and you get a substitution. Another one on Rodriguez. So Abigail Wright comes into the game for the Crimson. The sophomore from Newton, Massachusetts. Thankfully, everyone's okay over here. Well, most importantly, Sydney Paris is all right. <laughs> Took a big stumble into the scores table and some fans over there on the sideline. Gare zones knocked as she went for a layup. And two free throws coming up for Gare Zone. She was frustrated with herself that she couldn't convert on the end one, but she has had a great day. 13, just three for eight from the field, but six for six from the free throw line. See the frustration there. Thought she had a good chance in a three-point play. Yeah, she had a couple of those like you mentioned. I think the fourth quarter, we're gonna see more volume offensively out of both of these teams. It's hard to play. 40 straight minutes of rock solid defense. Both these teams came into the fourth quarter under 50 points. They're heating up a little bit now in the fourth quarter. Your zone knocks the first of two free throws. Make that seven for seven on the day. And she has had some really good games in an Indiana uniform. Averaged almost 12 points a game a season ago. And she was named to the Shara Miller top 10 watch list at the beginning of this year. Another two for two trips in the line. So back and forth we go. It's a seesaw. Now a one-point Indiana lead with 8-17. Harmony Turner on the left side. We still see Indiana the two threes. We haven't seen Indiana go man since the first quarter. Genius move by Terry Moore, and Moore McDeal gets a tip. Harvard will keep it, but will have to inbound again. For Harvard, it's about continue to do what you are doing. Don't let the moment overwhelm you. For Indiana, don't worry about what's happened. Yes, you haven't played great the last three quarters, but a win is a win. It's the first week of the season. Focus up and try and stay undefeated on the young year. Nice take by Abigail Wright with her left hand, too, beating the defender off the dribble. Haven't seen a ton of the offensive side for Wright today. That's her first basket, just one for two from the field, and now it's a Harvard lead. Right, played 18 minutes per game last year. She's just at the two-minute mark, scoring her first two points. Really interesting to see her come into the game at this time, but instant impact from 40 and Black. 7.30 to go in the game. Caroline Stripling setting a screen for Garzone, and now Garzone with a floater. Yarden Garzone, another bucket. She's got 17 now. And once again, stop me if you've heard it, back and forth, Indiana takes the lead. Little arm bar on Indiana. Caroline Striplin and Shea Chesky looking at each other. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Pat. I don't know if they know which one the foul was on. And that will be on Chesky. Meister will come into the game for Striplin, along with Sandvik for Chesky, who just recently committed the foul. And that's a really tough fourth foul to pick up for Chesky there. Inbound goes to Turner at the top of the key. Abigail Wright just had a nice finish on the other end. Turner trying to work on Sandvik, another floater, she got fouled. 
Harmony Turner able to draw a couple of fouls on this possession. Now she's worked her way to the free throw line. Turner found a mismatch with Sandvik and capitalized. Sandvik just couldn't keep up with Turner. We'll see potentially if we can get a replay. Yeah, let's take a look at this. On the way up, it may have even been Garzon that touched the shooting arm, but just another questionable ticky-tack foul. You typically don't see that inside the Big Ten, especially at Ooh. Indiana, but Turner will shoot a pair and try and take the lead. Yeah, I don't know about that, but Harmony Turner has a couple of free throws nonetheless. First one is true. How about this game for Harmony Turner? She has 16 now. That's her first made free throw. Remember, she went 0 for 2 back in the second quarter. Goes 2 for 2 on this trip, now at 50%, and now Harvard with a 54-53 lead. Not only do I love Turner's game, I love her swagger. She's jarring with the fans, talking with the students. 10 second call. Beautiful job by White to come up and tip the ball. She didn't grab it, but it prevented Indiana from getting the ball past half court in time. And that Harvard press finally steps up and forces an Indiana turnover. The inbound goes to Turner. Sandvik's at the top of this zone. It looks like they might be going man to man now. I think they are. Turner beat her defender at first and draws a foul. I think Turner's going to like if they go to man-to-man. -to -man. Yeah, I mean, she is just cooking right now, weaving in and out. I would argue Harmony Turner would have rather a foul not been called on yeah. that play. She passed both the Hoosiers and was about to scoop in a right-hand layup to increase the Harvard lead. Nonetheless, they'll inbound underneath. Yeah, no argument needed on that one. I think that foul definitely prevented two points from Harvard there. She'll touch it again here. Hatira brings the... Er, Passes the ball out of bounds, and down low, it's Lily Meister with two hands on Abigail Wright, and the officials are really not happy, or the fans are really not happy with the officials. I don't know if the officials are very happy either, because no. they just keep blowing the whistle. That's about 3,030 seconds. Atira will be the one to inbound again, a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Now up to Glenn Bello. Didn't see a ton of time in that third quarter. Indiana fans wanted to walk. Fade away, Glenn Bello. Knocks it down. Harvard with a three-point lead now. Garden Garzone gets it to Paris and throw it away again. This time picked off by White. Gets it over to Turner. Doesn't have the size advantage. Glenn Bello is the one to pick it up, though. And finally, Harvard will, will slow things down. Now with 17 on the shot clock after the hectic last 15 seconds. Harvard has the Hoosiers right now. They have their crowd bundled up. They have Indiana out of sorts offensively. Turner trying to increase the lead. Trying to drive on Sanvi. A push off, no basket, and carry more this time is really not happy. So nobody's happy with the officials right now, Luke. I say let him play. I mean, that one was probably a push off with the left forearm, but this game is just too good and too competitive for these stoppages. That's a really good defensive play, actually, by Sandvik to draw that. A bigger defender probably didn't affect her that much, but a great play, and now the Hoosiers have the ball. Harvard will come with the press again, but Paris left open from the corner and cannot break open after her frustrating day. That's a good shot, though, for Indiana. You Absolutely. want that with Cindy Perry. Shoot or shoot, and if you're Cindy Perry, you're going to keep taking those when you're open. Turner working with the screen from the right side. This time it's Jardin Garzone guarding her. Cutting baseline is right, one dribble, and got fouled. It didn't look like Wright had an angle at all, but I think Meister brought her arms down just a little. Who's your faithful is not happy right now, Ben. <laughs> Take another look at this one. So Meister starts low where she's out of position. That's a foul. That's a foul. Yeah, you can't bring your arms down like that. Even with a lot of that contact was with the ball, but, you know, it's just an easy call for the officials when you bring your arms down like that. Abigail Wright's first trip to the free throw line today, and she knocks the first through. Yeah, Wright just a sophomore. We talked about the increased minutes, or actually the decreased minutes. 18 a game last year. She's just in her fifth minute right now, but playing really good minutes. And I don't really see a reason for Coach Moore to take her out of the game. Just one for two at the free throw line there. 
Chloe Moore McNeil brings the ball up the floor for Indy. And, and of course, with a missed free throw, Harvard can't set up their press. We're nearing the final media timeout. Finally gets it off to Meister late and a foul on Harvard. I mean, it's going both ways, I guess. But, uh, yeah, Luke, you said you want to let him play. I, I don't think the officials are taking your, your suggestion. It's going to be two shots for Indiana, so free throws the rest of the way for both teams. I, I think it's just a ticky-tack. Anytime a defender puts two hands on a player with the ball, they're going to call that. Hey, at least they're consistent, Ben. Yeah. Meister misses wide left. I think that's one of the biggest things, too. And, and you got to look at now foul trouble for Harvard. Gabby Anderson and Harmony Turner both with four. And Carrie Moore, gutsy decision. Actually, they change it. Harmony Turner, that was not at her, so she only has three. But Gabby Anderson still has four, and she is in the game right now for the Crimson. And you also have to look at three fouls, something to monitor for Turner, who takes a right wing three and misfires. And a foul on Harvard. I believe they called a foul. Yeah, they did. They're hoping to make this a one-point game, and then you really got to strap in defensively here and sit down and try to grit your way into a couple steps and give yourself a chance to win down the stretch. Paris connects on the first. She just one for two from the free throw line coming into this trip. And she's able to make it 75% on the day. Indiana within one. Harvard going to keep getting the ball to Harmony Turner. Elena Rodriguez is sitting right now with foul trouble. Screen from Anderson. Turner thought about a pull-up jumper. And they get it to Anderson, who had 20 on Monday. She's been quiet today. Fade away floater, no good. Just able to grab it, Hatira. And a fresh 20 on the shot clock. They'll pull things back out. Second chance opportunities has been big for Harvard today, too. Now under 10 of the shot clock. Anderson, a contested three, it rims out. Indiana has a chance to take the lead once again. Now Chesky working on the left side. Good decision to slow it down there. Get a good look here. Where does Indiana go in these final few minutes? Through contact, Chesky got the foul. Couldn't finish, but she'll go to the free throw line. She's been quiet today as well. Just one for four from the field. And just those two points. This will be her first trip to the free throw line today. Typically down the stretch in games like this, guard play is going to be huge. I want to highlight something Indiana defensively. We've talked about their zone that they've stayed in through the remainder of the second half. I wouldn't hate to see the Hoosiers start denying Harmony Turner the ball. She's actually not bringing it up every single trip for Harvard. And everything is going through her, whether it's the pass, the scoring, and obviously the shooting for Turner. If you stop her from catching the ball, and we know Chloe, Mo Chloe, Chloe Moore McNeil can do that with the best of them. She's guarded Caitlin Clark before. I just think it would be interesting. Indiana comes out in a press now, Ben. No field goals in the last 319 for Indiana, but they take the lead on free throws here. 58-57 Assembly Hall fans on their feet again. Hatira with pesky defense from Chloe Moore McNeil. We talked about who does Indiana go to these last few minutes. We have a feeling Turner's going to get a lot of the shots. She gets one here, and she can't hit. Sydney Paris, a strong board. Turner tried to tip it away. She is aggressive. But Indiana's able to wither it. 3.25 to go in this contest. Moore McNeil catches a double team off the screen. Almost threw it away, but Garzone is able to keep it. Now they have 10 on the shot clock. Garzone working on a pick and roll with Meister, and an offensive foul on Garzone. It's Carly White putting her body on the line, and a beautiful way to stay set and draw the charge. Terry Morin trying to pump up her team. Have another look at this. Garzone, when she drives, one thing about her, because she is a shooter, she commits to the drive. Yeah. She committed a couple charges tonight. You don't see a lot of off, uh, off the dribble or off the bounce shots from uh, Garzone. 3.03 to go. Harmony Turner working with Rodriguez, who's back into the game with four fouls for Harvard. Anderson has four as well. Now an open three from Hatira. She left it short. Chesky wants to push, no numbers, three defenders, and finally will pull it out when she hits the three-point line. Paris left open for a second, and a blocking foul on Anderson, and that's going to be it for Gabby Anderson. 
I'm all for trying to draw a charge, Ben, but in that situation, early in the shot clock, your defense is trying to get set. It's a tough one because you are in the bonus and Sydney Parrish is a really good free throw shooter. The Hoosiers, a chance to go up three here. They're playing really good defense. They look to put this one away. Harvard hasn't scored in their last five field goal attempts. Elena Rocco will be the one to replace Anderson, who finishes this game with 2.42 to go. Parrish, another trip to the free throw line, nothing but net on the first. Just five points for Anderson today, two for eight for the field, one for two from beyond the arc after that 20-point game on Monday. Indiana hasn't scored a field goal in four minutes and 40 seconds. It's been Harvard committing fouls and the Hoosiers capitalizing at the line. They're a team 24 of 29 from the charity strike. No field goals in the last four minutes, but a 7-0 run for Indiana. They lead by three, 2.30 to go. Harvard needs a basket. Patira almost threw it away, but they're going to say that it was either Chesky or more McNeil who was grabbing Turner, and that was Chesky because she is heading to the bench, and she knows that's her fifth foul, upset with the call. And back-to-back -back possessions where we have defenders foul out. Gabby Anderson's done. Now Shea Chesky's done on the Indiana side. Chesky's just trying to settle in as a Hoosier. She's seen better games at Penn State. She's going to be just fine in this starting shooting guard role at Indiana. Gave Terry Morin some strong minutes tonight. Missed first free throw from Harmony Turner. She struggled with it in the first quarter, where she, or that was a third quarter, I believe, where she went two or 0 for two. But she has 17 today to lead Harvard scores. One for two here, now three for six on the day. Back to a two point game. Indiana still hasn't had a field goal in a while. Harvard, same spot. They're 0 for their last five from the field. A lot of points coming at the free throw line in this fourth. Moore McNeil trying to work around the bigger Rodriguez. Gets to her right hand. Meister with the offensive board, and she got fouled. More free throws coming up this time. It's Meister. That's a good play by Meister. She's been really quiet, but to snatch that offensive rebound, I know she wanted it back. And that ends Rodriguez. Great night. I know she hadn't done much in the second half, but she came to play at Assembly Hall. She lit it up early, and that's a lot of the reason that Harvard's in this spot they are right now, Ben. Well, Carrie Moore, after Indiana started to come back a little bit in that second quarter, she said she really needs her team to be able to defend without fouling, and they have not been able to do that in this second half. First, it was Anderson who fouled out. Now it's Elena Rodriguez who fouls out. And that will bring Katie Krupa into the game. Rodriguez had 15 on her day for Harvard. Eight of those came in the first quarter. A stellar first quarter for Harvard, where they scored 31 points. And the first free throw for Meister's up and good. Back-to-back -back great efforts for Lily Meister. Against Brown on Monday, 14 points. was 4-7 from the field. She has 14 right now, 5 of 9 from the field. Doing her job. It's a tough task to fill with no Mackenzie Holmes, but this is exactly what Terry Morin wanted out of 52. Now six for nine for the free throw line, too. And this is the first two-possession lead of the game for Indiana. It comes with two minutes to go, 62-58. Meister stepping up in replace of Mackenzie Holmes. She has 16 today. Turner dribbling it off her foot. Now a costly Harvard turnover where Moore McNeil will slow things down and Terry Morin's yelling at her to slow him down. We'll see what they draw up to extend this lead. Paris gets it to Garzon in the corner. They like the ball in the hands of Garzon. She's got 10 on the shot clock now. She's going to call for a screen from Meister. Not about taking a pull up three. Now Parrish to the right side with her right hand. No good. Rebound battle for it taken by the Crimson. Turner looks like she wanted to push. She does want to push. Gets to the block. Floater off the backboard and good. Tough shot. Harmony Turner turned it over the last time in the lane. Gave her a shoulder and a touch for two. We have a two-point game with a minute to go. Indiana content with taking the shot clock all the way down and wasting as much time as they can. Moore McNeil's given some room. She'll take that. That's too strong. And a foul on Harvard. Indiana has not scored a field goal in six minutes and 27 seconds, Ben, and they have a chance to win this game. 
Indiana's home winning streak is on the line here. They do lead by two, and they have a couple of free throws coming up for Lily Meister, who has had really made a home at the free throw line today. This, these will be her 10th and 11th free throws coming up. And she's three for, his, for her last three. His second one's a big one to try to make it a two-possession game. Still a lot of basketball left to be played with 55 seconds, especially when some of the shooters that Harvard has, Sandvik with the offensive board. Indiana pulls it back out. Sandvik was the only Hoosier in the box there. There was four black jerseys, and she got that rebound. Seven on the shot clock, though, just a 20-second reset. Garzon trying to do it herself, gets to the middle of the paint. It's blocked it in the hands of the Crimson. A timeout taken by Harvard. They trail by three with 35 seconds to go. How about this? Indiana and Harvard is coming down to the wire. Harvard led by as many as 15. It's a close one here on Big Ten Plus. Indiana streak of 18 straight, wins at home, is on the line. Harvard has put pressure on him all day and has led it for the majority of this game. But it's a three-point Hoosiers lead. Harvard with the ball with 35 seconds to go. A six-second differential between shot and game clock. You don't need a three here, Ben. Go for the best look. If it's a two, take it. I would be surprised if Turner doesn't touch it. Here she is. Well, it was Turner the one who inbounded the ball. Now they're going to have some... Handoff action all the way at half court. They have 20 on the shot clock. Now the ball is in the hands of Harmony Turner. Two defenders on her. Gives some time for Rocco. She takes a three and it hits it. The Hoosiers were too worried about Turner. It was a double team that turned into a triple team. And Rocco got a wide open look for three. Elena Rocco, the freshman, stepping up. And we have a tie game with 19 seconds to go. Indiana could take the last shot here. The shot clock is completely turned off. You mentioned it, Luke. So much pressure and attention put on Turner. Carrie Moore drew up a perfect play. I mean, picture perfect for Harvard. And it got Elena Rocco the open look. Probably wouldn't even be in the game in this situation if it weren't for the couple of foul outs for Anderson and Rodriguez. Turner now has 28 of 14. I love that find, but if you're gonna pull off an upset, it has to be a group effort. Another look at this one. You saw the two bigs on the pick, including Sandvik, who's guarding Turner on ball, stayed on Turner instead of switching when Chloe Moore McNeil stayed up, and it was a wide open look from the shooter's wing for Rocco. We're tied, Ben, 19 seconds to go. Indiana will probably wait for the last shot. I think you have to get Chloe Moore McNeil going downhill off a ball screen and either hit Garzone in the corner or find Meister inside. Meister, Moore McNeil, Garzone, Sandvik, and Parrish in. The pass inbounded was tipped, and Moore McNeil has it in the backcourt, finally gets it across. 10 on the clock, all tied at 63. Indiana trying to avoid overtime. Harvard wants it. Moore McNeil, a screen to the left. Three on the clock, goes to her left hand. No foul called, Harvard takes it. And a timeout for Harvard, so they'll have the ball with .9 seconds to go. Is that the shot that Indiana wanted? It didn't look like Indiana got set. Chloe Moore McNeil had the ball tipped away, then she had to ask the official right in front of us at the scorer's table, do I still have my dribble? And by the time she's looking up at the clock, there's about eight seconds to go. So that's all she could really do. That's poor execution from Indiana, a really bad look, and great defense from Harvard. Wow, I did not think that this game would be tied down the stretch, and we very well may be heading to overtime. How about Mona Zaric, too, coming back to Assembly Hall, getting that huge stop on Chloe Warmick deal. She walled up, played perfect defense, and she ended up grabbing that rebound, too. Some defense to offense substitutions now for Harvard. They're looking at the monitor to see if .9 is exactly what they have. Speaking of Mona Zardic, that's her in the middle of the huddle, on her feet, in the faces of the rest of the Crimson, hyping them up. You can tell this one just means a little bit more. So Harvard called that timeout with .9 to go. And 
still looking to see how much time they have left. The, de the off defense offense substitutions, uh, Krupa comes into the game as well as Elena Rocco, who hit that ginormous three to tie this game up with about 19 seconds left. Indiana fans starting to get a little nervous, but if there is just .9 on the clock, it is just a catch and shoot situation. Yeah, they've been nervous all night, and Indiana has not played well, but you gotta give credit to Harvard. The fact that Indiana's turned the ball over 22 times in a game is one thing, and the other, the Hoosiers, 0 oh, for their last six, they haven't scored a field goal in now seven minutes and 21 seconds. That is extremely uncharacteristic and a huge flaw in the Hoosiers game tonight. Point one is added to the clock, but of course with a women's college basketball rule, Harvard gets it ne near their own hoop. Maybe time for one dribble. Turner is the one inbounding it, has to find it into Krupa, fading away, doesn't hit anything. Free basketball here from Assembly Hall. Indiana Harvard is going to overtime the second half. Battle down the wire, and Elena Rocco hits the huge three. It'll be the freshman from Pittsburgh delivering the goods in Bloomington, Indiana. They're going to tip it off for overtime. Important to note the uh, the foul outs for both teams have a couple of players that did foul out. Well, Indiana just awarded Chechesky for Harvard. Both Elena Rodriguez is sitting on the bench as well as Gabby Anderson. All three of those are starters for their respective teams. So it's Boda Zarich who's going to jump with Lily Meister. And overtime has begun with Indiana taking it. Parrish, Moore, McNeil, Sandvik in for Chesky. Here Zone and Meister are the five on the floor for Indiana. Parrish with the ball on the top of the key. And already an off-ball offensive foul on Indiana. The five on the floor for Harvard. Carly White out there with Elena Rocco. So many whistles on both ends of the floor. Lydia Hatira, Harmony Turner, of course, and then Mona Zarich down low. Indiana, looks like they might go back. Now they stick with that man defense that struggled a little bit in the first quarter. And then they went to it in the second third. They went to the zone and it worked. Now Turner tries to get to the middle of the paint. Off balance, tough finish. Harmony Turner. Whoa. Crisscross, falling down, left hand, sure. And Indiana threw it away. Harvard was pressing. I don't know how much the press actually had to do with it. Maybe Chloe Moore McBeal had to keep her eyes on uh, the defender. The defender was. Took her eyes off the ball and went out of bounds. A couple feet away from Moore McNeil, just looked up before she really corralled the ball in. And Harvard, a chance to go up by two possessions now. Inbound goes to Turner. So they have that two point lead. Turner, nice crossover. Here the first two points of this overtime period. Now in the corner, Rocco, who hit that huge three, drives and left her layup short. She's going to want that one uh -oh, back. Uh-oh, Sydney Parrish is down. She said she's fine. She doesn't want play to stop. And she will limp her way back to the other end of the court. Finally, with 19 of the shot clock, she gets to the other end. Garzone picked up her dribble. And Terry Morin's going to take a timeout. And Parrish is going to check out of this game. Juliana Lamondola comes in. That is a huge loss for Indiana. They'll take this time out with 3.52 to go in the overtime period. But that's not good for the Indiana offense. She's had a rough day. But in a game like this, you'd love to have her down the stretch. Indiana on the ropes against Harvard in overtime. Just two total points have been scored in this overtime period, but it was by Harvard, the road team, and the underdog, and it's a steal by Turner and a wide open layup. Harmony Turner has four to start OT, and Harvard's up four. Harvard just has the energy. Indiana definitely looks lethargic. This is not Indiana basketball. This just isn't good basketball for the Hoosiers. That's now their 25th turnover, Ben. 
Here's Owen working on the left side. Gets it back, it'll drive to the free throw line. Meister, nice little short jumper, and she left it short. So Luke, through their first two games, this one even isn't over yet for Harvard, but through their first two games, 59 turnovers forced against UMass and Indiana, and they have the ball here up four. This team was projected third in the preseason Ivy League poll. I think a lot of people might be wanting to change their minds right Atira about now. Got caught with it, and she took an extra step. Nice finish to get that even up in the air, but I think she got an advantage because she took a step or two. So now Harvard turns the ball over. Almost three minutes exactly on the clock. Lamandola has trouble with it. Finally gets it up to Gare's zone. Chloe Moore McNeil just doesn't look like she wants the ball right now, Ben. This is your starting grad senior point guard, and she's shying away from the ball in the press right now. Something to note. And how about Sydney Paris? Something to note. She's in at the scores table to check in, and Indiana threw that out of bounds, and it's going to go to Harvard. A collision in front of the Indiana bench. Harmony White and I'm not, or Harmony Turner, rather, and I'm not sure who for Indiana. I didn't even hear a whistle. I didn't hear a whistle either. I, I thought I saw a point to Harvard. I guess it'll stay here with Indiana. And Paris gets an ovation as she comes in. Ooh. I don't ah. think Turner touched ah. that at all. Oh. It looked like more McNeil actually touched yeah. it, if anyone did. So Indiana catches a break. Yeah, and you said it the best. Indiana catches a break. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's Zoe to the corner. Quick fire three, and she's short. Indiana still hasn't scored yet in the overtime period. Turner to the left block. That was quick of the shot clock, especially with a four-point lead like this. That's not what you want. Meister finally gets it to Moore McNeil. So that's just interesting. Moore McNeil passing the ball before she gets past the timeline and then runs to the corner. Hands now on her knees. Indiana looks a little bit gassed. Harvard keeping the intensity up defensively. Paris driving on the left side, an off-ball foul again, this time on Harvard and Mona Zaric. So Indiana is in the bonus, so we're going to get... Uh, Free throws here for the Hoosiers are going to be huge. And it's Lily Meister. If there's anyone who's, who's got their practice at the free throw lines today, it is Meister. She shot 11 up to this point. 7 for 11, just a bit below 70%. And she's able to knock through the first. Big game today for Meister. She's second on the Indiana team at scoring. She's had 18 after a nice performance against Brown where she had 13 and 6. Make that 18 on the just first free throw made and 13 rebounds for her, but she goes one for two from the line. So still a three-point lead for Harvard. Now two minutes left to go. Zarich had trouble with it at the top of the key. Turner, nice no-look pass to Zarich. Sets up a, a pump fake from Rocco. Now Hatira drives, pull up jumper, too strong. Indiana grabs it. Down by one possession and 145 to go. Things are getting interesting down the stretch again. Moore McNeil drives inside and draws a foul this time. It's a good take from Moore McNeil, but that was very similar to how regulation ended. Going left, and it looked like the Harvard defender just kind of fenced up there, and her hands were not exactly straight up. Another look at it here. Moore McNeil drives the contact, but I don't really know if you're going to get that call more often than not. The Hoosiers a chance to cut it to one in overtime. So we do see the defense to offense substitutions as Hatira comes out of the game and Krupa checks in. But more McDeal, two free throws coming up. Can make it a one-point game. She hits the first. She's four for five from that spot today. Just nine points for her. Hasn't shot great from the field, like you said. Two for nine. But she makes it a one-point game, 67-66. Indiana fans on their feet, and now it's a Harvard scoring drought of over two minutes. It has been just a game of runs. Zaric pull up, jumper, she hits it. Mona Zaric in her return game. Makes it a three-point lead again. Indiana still within one possession. Pass deflected, Moore McNeil able to keep it in bounds. Meister had the seal and has the finish. Beautiful pass from Moore McNeil on the entry there. Harvard's defense got a little over-aggressive. We're at 105 to go in the first overtime period at a one-point game. Harvard with the lead and the ball. 
Handoff now to Rocco. They're going to try a couple of handoff action at the top of the key. Now seven on the shot clock. Drive to the left side. Carly White left her layoff short. 44 seconds in the Indiana fans on their feet. He's had an 18 differential between shot and game clock, but Indiana has a chance to take the lead here with either a two or a three. Garzon barreling away inside and a charge on Yarden Garzon. Just a little out of control, I think, on that one. She tucked the ball, and there were a couple defenders there. And Carrie Moore calls a timeout. The one-point lead and a 32 seconds, two-second differential between shot and game clock. I love that replay. If we could get another look at it, that'd be great. That's just not Yarden Garzon's game. She puts the ball in her right hand off the bounce and corrals it like a football running back. There's it's obviously Elena Rocco. Who do you want to foul at the free throw line? And they have a lot of good free throw shooters. Sonia Glenn Bello only went 57% from the line a season ago. But she's improved for the free throw line. Two for two in their first game against UMass. Turner takes it out of bounds in front of the Harvard bench. Indiana staying back. That two and a half second differential between shot and game clock. They're not fouling yet. Turner with it at the Indiana logo. Now Garzone comes up to double team. Gets it over to the left side. I 15, foul now. they switch Good sides. Foul. And City Parish does foul Glenn Bello. We talked about if there's anyone to foul. It probably is Sanaya Glenn Bello. Yeah, Glenn Bello checking back into the game. Has not had her best performance either. Scored two points. Is 0 for 1 from the field. Also not having shot a free throw can play a big part. The band and student section behind this end of the floor. So not too many things working in Harvard's direction outside of their one-point lead. Sonia Glenn Bellow's got a couple of shots at the line. Just two for two on the season. And she misses the first, shooting right into that Indiana student section. And no matter what, even if she made both, it would be a one-possession game. But this is a huge one to make it a two-point lead. And she does. Timeout now by Terry Morin. So Indiana wants to talk things over with 17 and a half to go. This time the shot clock's turned off. At the end of regulation, Indiana had the game tied, so they wanted to get the last shot. This time, obviously, that's not what they're worried about. They're down by two. The Hoosiers have not found success off the dribble, whether it's been Chloe Moore McNeil at the end of regulation or Yard and Garzone putting the ball on the deck. I think you have to start it here with Moore McNeil, have Meister on the inside because that's been the magic in the second half. Yes, she's gone to the free throw line a lot, but Harvard can't stop her, so they've been fouling her. Get Moore McNeil on a pick and roll, have Yard and Garzone in the corner. If they help, Dish it to Garzone and try and win it. If not, you really got to look for Meister on a slip or posting up inside because that's your best look all night. And the Hoosiers have to go to that now in desperate measures. Two of Indiana's really good three-point shooters, Jordan Garzone and Sidney Parrish, haven't had the best three-point shooting night tonight. Two for six for Garzone and one for seven. Check that, 0 for four for Parrish from beyond the yard. Both of them have not been afraid to put the ball on the floor that you're talking about. And something to look at, it's a tough call because the officials have called this very, they haven't let, let it play a lot. They've called very ticky-tack fouls, a lot of fouls called in general. But, you know, if you're, if you're looking at the, the game of college basketball, the tendencies are officials like to swallow their whistles in end game situations like this. It's in all sports, really, and I think this is a perfect time where that could hurt the Hoosiers. However, you have to get a good look here. No excuse not to. Indiana's offense is what they rely on. Let's see what they do here. Indiana offensive substitution as Lamondola will check into the game. The defense for Harvard is White, Zarich, Turner, Glenn Bello, and Rocco. Garzone to inbound for Indiana. Over to Moore McNeil. Doesn't seem to be in much of a hurry. She gets a screen on the left side. Trying to work on Turner. Into the middle of the paint, trying to back her down. Now out to Lamondola. Five on the clock. Floater missed it. Offensive rebound and jump ball called. Harvard has possession. It'll be Harvard ball with three seconds to go on a two-point lead. And another timeout is called. You are what you say you are, Ben, yeah. and Harvard is a defensive basketball team. That was an all-around stop, start to finish. They made Chloe Moore McNeil 
go to her right hand. When she went back left in the lane, she bobbled the ball. Lamondola on the drive actually got a really good look out of that on the restart. However, couldn't get the layup to go, and they crash the boards, and it's Carly White, the sophomore, who makes potentially, potentially the game-winning play with the jump ball tie-up. Harvard is three seconds away from stunning Indiana, picking up their first program win over Indiana. This is the first meeting between these two. And it'd be the first top 25 win for Kerry Moore. Indiana has not lost in their last 18 games here in Assembly Hall. They're able to advance it on their side. It's inbound to Zarts, and it'll be Moda Zarts to go to the free throw line. Did not attempt a free throw in her first game. Shot 75% from the strike a season ago. And the amount of parity in college sports with the transfer porter. Zarich, two years at Indiana, and now two free throws to potentially ice the Hoosiers in the first week of the season and end an 18-game home non-con winning streak. Shooting into the Indiana student section, and Zarich knocks down the first. Usually when Zarich is shooting these free throws in Assembly Hall, the crowd's with her those first two seasons. Now she could seal it, and she does. Four-point lead, 72-68. Terry Morin matches with a timeout to advance the ball, but this is almost an impossible task for Indiana with 2.4 to go. Wow, it's not over till it's over, Ben, but Zarich may have just tucked the Hoosiers in bed. Fans are running for the exits right now at Assembly Hall. Not a familiar sight, not a familiar feeling. Harvard, what have you done in Bloomington, Indiana? It's just the first week of the season. Indiana fans shocked right now, too. You, you talked about, look at them there, heading for the exit. Still hoping for a miracle with 2.4 left. They'll get the ball on their side of the floor. But if you're Indiana right now, obviously you need to force a tough shot. If you're Harvard, put somebody on the ball and then you want to stay as far away as possible to avoid a foul. Just don't foul. Yeah. Just let him shoot it. If it goes in, it goes in, inbound it quick. It'll be more McNeil to inbound with 2.4 and Parrish didn't even catch it. That's it, college basketball world meet Carrie Moore. In just her third season at Harvard, she picks up a top 25 win, does the impossible, comes into Assembly Hall, and takes down the Indiana Hoosiers. My, oh my. I am shocked, Ben. That is a complete four-quarter effort from the Crimson tonight. It was First, it was Ivy League, look out for Harvard. Their first program win versus Indiana, the first time these two teams met. First top 25 win for Kerry Moore, like I said. And at first, it was Ivy League, look out for Harvard. They were picked to finish third of the league, had a nice showing on Monday against UMass. Now, it's college basketball world, look out for Harvard. A two-point, or rather four-point win in overtime over the top 25 Indiana Hoosiers. And the streak of 18 straight, Home wins for Indiana comes to a close at the hands of Harvard and Kerry Moore. Josie Broyles has the star, Coach Kerry Moore, right now. Josie. Thanks, guys. Here with Coach Kerry Moore. Coach, what an insane game, an insane win. Walk me through how you're feeling right now. I mean, it's just a culmination of uh, two. Mm, chara, chara.
थोड़ा थोड़ा माला वाले वाले प्यास Mm-hmm. <laughs> 